So now that we've covered the human heart, we're going to now focus on the other sides of the circulatory system. We understand that a circulatory system contains three main components, and that is a central heart organ, a some sort of, some sort of circulatory fluid, and also blood vessels, right? Some sort of vessel network. And that's what we'll focus on in this next flowchart. What we want to entitle the next flowchart is blood vessel structure. And this is going to be the structure of blood vessels in higher order organisms just like the vertebrates that we've been seeing. And this is summarized in figure 42.9. What we need to understand about these blood vessels is that not only do they provide a route for circulatory fluid to move around the body, specifically blood, they're actually going to be structurally uh, designed in a way that it ensures the different functions that we've covered thus far of circulation. So let's take a look. Blood vessels within a vertebrate, some sort of cardiovascular circulatory system, are going to mainly be in the form of arteries and veins. And they have a very similar structure with three layers. So there are going to be three layers to every artery and every vein. The outermost layer is known as the, or, or the innermost layer, will go inner to outer. The innermost layer is known as the endothelium. So we'll write this down as endothelium and subclassify this as the innermost, just to make sure we understand the orientation that we're at. So if we take an artery or we take a vein and we look at this most inside portion of it, we're looking at its endothelium. Therefore, because it's the innermost, the endothelium lines the lumen. That's the opening within the vessel in which blood travels through. And the purpose of the endothelium is to provide a smooth surface. It's a very smooth, smooth structure. And overall, because it has a smooth sm surface, it's important for the overall success of circulation in the sense that with a smooth surface, what you're minimizing is resistance. So we'll write that down. A smooth surface within the endothelium, the place closest to where blood is moving, minimizes resistance to blood flow. And this is kind of the reason why we want to ensure that the arteries and veins are not being uh, so there's nothing within them that's blocking blood flow. Let's say like fatty builds up or cholesterol builds up. That's things that are going to resist blood flow and cause blood flow to possibly go backwards or not go as efficiently forward as we wanted to. And therefore, it's critical to make sure that the endothelium is a very smooth area. And that's what it is if you have a normal endothelium, a normal lining of the lumen within arteries and veins. So it's, overall, we want to make sure that it's a smooth area. In addition, after the endothelium, the middle layer is known as a smooth muscle layer. So there's going to be some smooth muscle. Again, smooth muscle you cannot control. This is involuntary. You do not control. You never think of, oh, hey, I want my arteries to get bigger or I want my veins to get smaller, etc. This is involuntary control. And the smooth muscle is going to be classified as the middle layer of arteries and veins. Smooth muscle is going to be usually, if we think of it in terms of arteries versus veins, it's going to generally be thick and flexible, but in terms of the distinction between them, it's going to be thicker, it's going to be stronger, and it's going to be generally more flexible in one more than the other. And that's specifically going to be in arteries, because arteries generally are going to have a higher blood pressure, a higher force on them than veins. And therefore, it makes sense to have them be thicker and stronger and more flexible because of the environment that they have to hold and move blood within because they're going away from the heart towards the rest of the entire body. Lots of work, lots of pressure needed for that. It makes sense to have a layer that's thicker, stronger, and more flexible within those arteries that are going away from the heart to the rest of the body. And finally, the outermost layer of both arteries and veins is just the connective tissue layer that surrounds the entire vessel. So this is the connective tissue layer. This is the outermost, so we want to make sure we write that down. This is going to serve as an outer coat of sorts on these vessels. And what they're going to do is they're going to have a very sort of elastic and flexible nature because they have an elastic and collagen-like structure, fibrous structure that makes, them, uh, that makes up the connective tissue that allows for these vessels, these arteries and veins, to support the overall movement of blood. So the main purpose of the connective tissue is to provide support, structural support, 
to make sure that the arteries and veins stay intact and don't just disintegrate or fall apart. So it's a nice sort of wraparound structure to ensure that. Now, we've covered arteries and veins, but there's another vessel that we have not looked at, and that is the capillaries. The capillaries are the smallest, and the capillaries are going to also have certain layers and structures that are going to allow it to function successfully in circulation. The capillary is going to consist of two main layers, the endothelium, which just like in arteries and veins is the innermost layer, and also the basal lamina. The basal lamina of a capillary is going to be the structure surrounding, it's going to be a surrounding extracellular structure. That's our basal lamina. More on this idea of the extracellular space of capillaries um, as we move forward. But for right now, just understand that as a structure, the capillary is going to be the only, it is the only location of exchange. Only location of exchange is purpose of circulation of blood is to exchange goods between a muscle and the blood and between an organ and the blood, whatever it may be. It's the only location at which we have direct exchange between, now we'll be even more specific than we've ever been in this lecture, between blood and the other point of exchange is going to be ISF, interstitial fluid. So much so, we have so much exchange, it's so well dispersed throughout the body that Upon a deep analysis of capillaries within the entire body, there's at least one capillary, at least one capillary next to every single cell in the body. Next to every single cell. What does that tell you? It tells you that every single cell has needs. It needs oxygen, it needs nutrients, whatever it may be. The only way to get those needs, to satisfy those needs, is to exchange with blood because blood is a highway. It carries all of these things for these cells. And therefore, the only point of exchange at which we're going to have successful uh, delivery and exchange of goods and waste products, whatever it may be, even at the cellular level, at microscopic level, is going to be at this capillary. So it's a very important exchange vessel structure within the circulatory system. And just to note how many of these, if, every sing if we state this, that at least one capillary is next to every single cell, this equates to about 60 thousand miles of capillaries within our body if we laid them out side by side next to one another 60,000 miles shows you just how important it is to exchange goods effectively within the circulatory system so that covers our look at the blood vessel structure be sure to look at figure 42.9 to understand this inner to outer arrangement of this uh, type of blood vessel what we're going to now be focusing on in the next video is this capillary in a little bit more detail and understanding this point of exchange